The Whiten Community Center is committed to enhancing the health and well-being of individuals and families while building a strong community in the Blackstone Valley. We offer social, recreational, educational, and outreach programs that bring the community members of all ages and backgrounds together. Hello, Red Riding Hood here from the Whiten Community Center Summer Theater Program. We had a blast putting on the play What Happened After Once Upon a Time. This story is about a narrator who, oh, wait just a moment. It just occurred to me that you may not know about the Whiten Community Center. Ah, now that's a story that needs telling. You see, a long time ago... No, no, no. Not that long ago. <sighs> Mr. Thompson, a little history help here? Sure. Thank you. Priscilla Mason was the daughter of Elsa Whiten Mason. Priscilla's mother, Elsa, was one of the four daughters of George Marston Whiten. And those four daughters, in 1920, when, when uh, George Marston Whiten died, contributed the funds to build the community center in the first place. Elsa uh, was a lifelong supporter of the community center. And when Elsa died in the early 1970s, Priscilla decided that because this was so important to her mother, it would be important to her. Priscilla Mason lived most of her life in Washington, D.C. It was a tribute to her mother uh, that propelled Priscilla Mason for really 30, 35 years of uh, philanthropy for the White and Community Centers. Every kid in Whitensville grew up here at the gym. And imagine our absolute uh, sadness and shock and horror uh, on Sunday morning in April of 1959, driving to church with my family, driving past the front of the gym in ruins from a terrible fire that had happened the night before. It felt like we lost a member of the family. It was that traumatic for us. So the gym was closed for at least a year as we entered the 1960s, everyone really knew that the time for the White and Machine Works, which really ran everything here in town, uh, was coming to an end. So it was rebuilt in a minimal type of a way with insurance money and also with some donations from people in the community. And we were very happy that it reopened uh, about a year later uh, and we were able to come back down to the gym for swimming and other activities. Skating was big back in the day. Skate Club was held on Saturday afternoons from 3 to 5, ran by all volunteers. We had 100, 150 kids in some seasons. It was run to teach children of all ages the basic fundamentals of skating. Members that we had, we used them as teachers to teach the children how to stop correctly, how, make, how to fall and, so they wouldn't hurt themselves. We also um, had somebody come in from Uxbridge, his name was Sid Snyder, that taught some of the children how to do dancing. So some of the older ones learned, you know, waltz and different dances on their skates. Um, and some of these people that were in Skate Club are still friendly today because I know they still talk on Facebook. We also did the Jerry Lewis Skate-a-thon, which was another thing um, that was good for the children because they had to go out and get pledges and they didn't have to have a lot. Whatever pledge they got, they were able to bring in but it also got them involved in helping others. Now that's dedication. I wonder if they knew that they were going to be matchmakers. As I always said, I was skating on a Saturday night and Mark came over to ask my friend Darlene to skate, who was sitting next to me, and she said no. But he turned to me and asked me and I smiled and hopped up and off we went. And for the next three, three and a half, three years, half years, we skated pretty much every couple and triple skate. and. Um, Life went on, and he went into the Marines. Um, was it 79? 79. March 79. Yep, and we had lost touch with each other. Without the Whitensville Community Center. Time out! That's an easy mistake to make, since Whitensville and the Whiten Community Center get their name from the Whiten family. It's easy to think that they are both connected. But the center is private and doesn't receive funding from the town of Whitensville. And anyone can be a member, no matter where you live. Mark, Debbie, please continue. We probably would not have met, and we definitely would not have been getting married next year. 
the roller skating tradition lives on. You can still come here on Friday evenings to roller skate. Let's not forget about some Olympic history that started right here. We had in our member lounge for many years some old photographs of boys and girls, men and women from the 1920s and into the early 1940s uh, who were great basketball players here uh, or were great swimmers. One of the pictures was a lady by the name of Alice Bridges. She took swim lessons as a young girl and then she joined our swim team here at the White Community Center and she started competing in local and then regional and then even national competitions, uh, particularly in the backstroke. Uh, 1936 Olympics came along and Alice was chosen as an alternate on the team. On the way to Germany, the star of the team was uh, kicked off the team. So they turned to young Alice Bridges, age 18, and said, you're gonna have to swim those events. She believed she finished first. Well, you know, Adolf Hitler was running that event, and he couldn't stand the fact that an American girl had won the event, and so the judges were told to award first and second. It was a very close race. Uh, first and second went to the Dutch swimmers, who were, of course, Germanic uh, people, and Alice got the bronze. In 2006, Alice came back for a visit. And it was the first time since about 1940 that she had been inside the building. And I could see all the memories flooding back to Alice. She was in her 90s. It was a pleasure uh, to meet her, to see the real person behind the old pictures on the wall. I just thought that was one of my greatest highlights of uh, my time here at the Community Center. The White and Community Center just keeps getting better. In 1993, major renovations and an addition were completed. The Blackstone Valley Children's Place moved into four new classrooms. The Children's Place is an early learning center for preschool, kindergarten prep, as well as for school-aged children. And while kids are at the Children's Place here at the White and Community Center or at the Douglas Elementary School location, they take art and music classes and learn social skills. Here at the center, they even take swimming lessons. They're always learning, but the kids just think they're here to have fun. The programs vary to fit everyone's needs. Half day, whole day, before school, after school, while school is in session, and during vacation. Check out bvchildrensplace.com to find out more about it. What about the rest of it? Ready to rev it up? The Whiten Community Center offers a state-of-the-art fitness center and a variety of aerobics classes. It's up to you. Exercise on your own schedule, however you like. Specially designed classes called Silver Snakers for seniors. Everyone can find an exercise class that suits them. Water is even lower impact. The original pool is kept warm and is perfect for seniors or people with limited mobility. There is even a special lift to get people in and out of the water. There is open exercise time too. Warm water is great for the kids and parents can bring their babies to play and bond together in the pool. Tots come for water safety and to start learning how to swim.
Red Cross classes, level one through five, teach kids how to become good swimmers. And if they have a competitive drive, kids ages six up all the way through college can join the Crimson Aquatic Swim Team, one of the top New England programs since 2002. Before we get to the program, you've got to meet some pretty special people. Without them, the team would still be back in the original pool. My granddaughter was on the Blue Dolphins team, and I was talking to her and her mother one afternoon, and I said, how are the Blue Dolphins doing? And her mother said, it's wonderful, we have a wonderful time. But of course, the problem is the pool was built in 1925, and it's 15 feet short of the tournament pool, so when we go to tournaments, they have to adapt. And I said, well, what could be done about that? She said, build a new pool. So that's what I did. I am a licensed commercial contractor, and I was able to uh, uh, enlist the help of uh, an engineer who was on my staff by the name of Alan Nelson, and he had been a pool designer for many years of his life. So he drew up the plans. We built the pool, and uh, it was an outdoor pool. And uh, I said, we need to build a building over it. And some of the fellow members of the team said, oh, Jim, uh, that, that's too expensive. We, we should just let it remain as an outdoor pool. I said, no, I don't think that's right. So I had the building designed and uh, I had it built. We needed to raise money for these projects. One of the ways we raised that money was by selling bricks. Then we were able to get a loan from a local bank and between the, the contributions and the uh, sale of the bricks, we, we came out uh, financially okay. Part of being a small town insurance agent, the classic model is a, is a high volunteer profile. And so we have sought out uh, local organizations and, and tried to help. And, and for uh, many years uh, before me, my father was uh, very active here at the community center. He served on the a group they called DAC, which was a fundraising committee, and uh, it has been active in a huge variety of activities here. We lost that about 10 years ago, and in his memory, uh, my mom and, and I uh, built a pavilion up in the park, and it's a really uh, fitting tribute. It, it expands the capabilities of what we're able to do at the park, and it's really a fitting backdrop. It, it replaces a building that had been there called the Tea House, and we're proud to have been able to help get it there. This gave swimming at the center a brand new start. We are a silver medal club in the United States Swimming in level four, which means we're one of the top 50 or so clubs in the United States Swimming. We feel like we're a great part of this place. Uh, we've worked together, we've uh, taken on projects together. The community center has been great, the staff has been wonderful to us. They keep allowing us to grow the program. When we first started about five years ago, we had about 30 swimmers on the team and we are now up to approximately 140 swimmers. We have six different levels within our program from our novice level swimmers to our national level swimmers. I believe the sport is teaching a lot of the members some life skills that they can use, whether it's time management, goal setting, learning how to fail and get back up and try again, and those type of um, things that need to be taught to children today. We expect a lot out of the kids, we demand a lot out of the kids, and in almost all instances, the, the swimmers rise to the occasion. I started the high school swim team four years ago. I also am starting this fall a swim club which is going to be geared to kids 8th through 12th grade. So I'm hoping you know, this opens up doors for others, you know, for future high school swimmers as well. I coach the master swim team. They've gone on to do compete in triathlons, half Ironmans, Ironmans. It's really neat to know that I've impacted others in the water because that's one of the biggest fears in a triathlon. It's you in the open water. 
if I'm not at my own home, you can always find me at the White Community Center. You can swim laps at your own pace during open lap time and be like Bill Lyman. I only started doing a half a mile uh, a day and then uh, I went to a mile and now I'm at a mile and a half a day. And I have, uh, I swim over 2,300 miles so far. And my goal is to, right now, to hit 2,500. What to do with the little ones while you're working out? There is babysitting available in the morning. And during the school year, there is a kids club in the evening so moms and dads can have peace of mind while they work out. Summertime is chocked full of kids activities. Half and full day camps run all through the summer so parents can pick and choose which camps suit their kids and their vacation schedule. Like Golden Girl Soccer, Inventors Workshop, Dodgeball Madness, Design, Build and Destroy, Football and Floor Hockey, and Pump It Up Dance and Cheer Camp, to name a few. Many of the kids that grow up participating in these camps or lessons have such a great time that they come back to take courses to get their certification to be a counselor or a lifeguard. We've all gone through um, the camps that they do, the summer camps downstairs. My mom was pregnant with me when she was taking him through babies and tops class. So I was in the pool ever since, even before ever since I was you were born. Fetus, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can find at least one of us in here at all times. So it's one of those things we should just like have a little tent in the corner of the pool area and just have it be like the honorary Eckberg house. And then we label some of our coworkers honorary Eckbergs because they're just like our family. They're like our siblings. All of us have been on the Northbridge High School swim team. She, Lynn actually helped start it and that's definitely helped make our bond, especially with our coach, Denise Foster, who is also a lifeguard here, much closer. She's now more of like a mother to us. And it's just one of those things where without the community center and without this family structure, we wouldn't have had the amazing experiences we've had so far. I have three boys. They've all worked here. They all, they're good with kids and you know, it's, it just keeps going. I see all the little kids and they're yelling their names and, you know, it's, <laughs> it's gone full cycle, you know. College student memberships are available for those on summer break wanting to stay fit. And that includes everything here. Well, maybe not everyone needs everything. So there is a limited summer pool and tennis membership too. How cool is that? Okay, okay, I know your head is swimming by now, but there's more. When September rolls around, the gym comes alive with basketball. Youth leagues run for six weeks and adult leagues run for nine weeks. Even toddlers get into the act at toddler time. Recently, they began construction of new bathrooms near the tennis courts. Outdoor events like Picnic in the Park will be easier soon. Do you know that the gym and the two pools can be rented out for parties? Is there anything more fun than swimming, roller skating, or playing games in the gym with your friends for a birthday party? Well, okay, you add the cake, ice cream, and birthday presents, and that's complete fun. What a hoot. Oh yeah, thanks, Owl. As I started to say in the beginning, Red Riding Hood was a character out of the 2013 summer theater production called What Happened After Once Upon a Time. Our team practiced for eight weeks with the help from our director and many volunteers. Finally, in the end of July, we performed on the stage in the Life Song Church in Sutton. Our narrator, being a last minute substitute, tried very hard to read fairy tales, but was always interrupted by us, the characters, who all had a different version of our stories to tell. We succeeded in derailing his perception of fairy tale reality to the point where he almost quit too, but it all worked out in the end. Um, children from all over the Blackson Valley like to be a part of it. Again, it's free, so that really makes it one of a kind because there aren't other theater programs that are offered like that. They really do put in a piece of themselves to the final production, um, and they give every single time they come. They really are like young professional actors and actresses, just like you would see in any theater company, and 
it's a blast. It's actually something I really look forward to every single year. And you gotta come and check them out. You just have to. What do we think about summer theater? Yes. It rocks. Yes. And that's just part of the youth outreach program. We call it the Rockdale Youth Center, but it's really uh, an educational center. The kids come from school, and the first thing they do is they have to complete their homework. They see other kids striving to make sure their homework is done correctly. And what happens is kids then start feeding off one another, and you have kids that help other kids do their homework. And so it's kind of a two-fold education method. They have both the academic, but then they have the social aspect that's monitored and directed. Monique does a great job. She's, um, I say, extremely hardworking and uh, very positive. The kids naturally gravitate to Monique because she can motivate them. She can also um, toe the line with them. They learn that there are limits, but they have flexible enough limits because it's a smaller environment and a peer environment. On an average day, we probably have 25 to 30 kids. When you talk about support, it's not just the kids, it's parents, it's volunteers, and then the community as a whole. This year we're starting a new program for mentoring. We have some amazing high school students, and I'm hoping that they can come down and share a little bit of their world with our younger students. Ways to sustain a community is making sure that we are educating um, our youth and making sure that they will be productive. And if, you, if kids can, can see volunteerism in action, that brings a lot to the uh, community as well and helps enrich and sustain um, uh, the area. So it's, it's a vital program that um, I wish every community had. The Youth Outreach Program also offers free Saturday Fitness Gym Swim and Fun at the Community Center. This all happens without a dime of local, state, or federal funding. Fundraising efforts and memberships are crucial. There are more ways to help out. An issue that's near and dear to my heart is the um, membership scholarships for the children and the campership scholarships for the children. We were able to be benefited with those scholarships and just this past year, um, I have seen my way clear to be able to be the purchaser of those scholarships. My fiance and I, this past Christmas, decided that that would be a great gift to give each other. And we bought two of them. Um, youth memberships is what they're called. And I would implore and encourage anybody, um, if you want to feel good and, and get some holiday spirit, that is the thing to do. We had an existing will. Um, it was mostly for charities around the United States. And my husband Bob said, you know, we should give something to some local organizations as well. And I said, you know the Whiten Community Center is very near and dear to my heart, and I want to give them a bequest as well. And so he said, yeah, that's fine, let's do that. Here are a few things that even longtime members may not know. The center offers discounted programs for seniors, discounted programs for people with special needs, work experience for developmentally disabled young people, collections for food pantries, military care packages, and toys for tots, support for our local fire, police, and schools through donations. The center also volunteers with other organizations, offers its facilities and grounds to groups in the community, offers meeting locations for nonprofit faith-based groups, free community events, and awareness and wellness programs. There is more, but I would like to encourage everyone to visit the Whiten Community Center website at whitencommunitycenter.com to learn more about the programs, events, fundraising efforts, and scholarships. Or stop in to pick up a lovely and detailed brochure at the front desk and talk with the friendly staff. A big thank you to all who support the White and Community Center. Goodbye and thanks for listening. It's all yours! Back in uh, Puerto Rico, we, we, my family personally, we didn't have a local gym to go to. Plus, um, during my high school years here, I went to Whitensville Christian. and So it was also a great blessing that we could use the weight room here. And I continue coming back and using it in college summers. I've had a knee replacement uh, two years ago. And I believe because of my water 
workout exercise classes, I was able to come back so much sooner. I was only out for one month. The um, lifeguards, they know me, and they know I have asthma, and they watch over me, and if I need something, they're right there. Initially when I started coming, I was taking the arthritis class. My muscles have gotten a lot stronger, my bones have gotten a lot stronger. I've taken what I've learned from those classes and I do them during the lap exercise time, which is more of an open. You can do the, either do laps or exercises or chat, which was, we do a lot of chatting at that time too, which is how we become close and it becomes more like a family environment. The whole eight year, I have been using this facility almost every day. Uh, has been uh, like an uh, inseparable part of my life and uh, I got to know a lot of good friends and parents of kids and so I really feel like this is a great time. I'd like to give a very special thank you to all of the fabulous group fitness instructors who keep us happy, healthy and strong. I love teaching and so when people come to me for the first time and they've not done step before that's my favorite because I want to let them know how, how fun it is and that they can do it. And the community center is one of the best places I've ever worked and I've worked at a lot of gyms. It's very supportive, I think. There's just nothing beats working at the community center. It's the family atmosphere. You, you know everybody. They help you, I want to say, bloom and grow. You know, um, the, the training is there for you to develop, you know, your skills and, and become more effective and competent. And that's, that's so big.